Thank you everyone for joining us uh, for our Herbal Mixology webinar. Um, my name is Doug Platz. I head up operations here at Gardenuity. Um, we have a great happy hour planned for you all, a great way to kick off the, uh, the weekend, um, if you've not already started it, uh, and a great way to kick off and start thinking about Memorial Day as well. Um, we have three great uh, companies talking to you about how to infuse herbs and herbal, herbal um, um, flavors into, into your cocktails. Uh, we have Donald Latier, uh, co-founder and CEO of Gardenuity. Um, we have Claudia and Joe of Kitty Trail Vodka. Uh, and we have Alicia Wood, um, who is going to sh show us how to mix three unique cocktails. Um, she has shared, we've shared the, uh, the ingredients and instructions ahead of time. Um, they'll, they'll be in the calendar invite and in the email that I sent this morning. Um, they're also on our Instagram page. And so if you're not already following us on Instagram, you'll see, uh, please do. And uh, you'll see that in one of the stories. And we can always follow up afterwards with those in more detail. Um, I did want to also say we have a great event coming up on May 30th. Um, that is a pepper party uh, with Chef Katie Lopez. And she's going to be showing some cool things that we can be doing with peppers and pepper plants, uh, along with Donna as well, and talking about how to really grow successful peppers. Um, th th today's session is, is going to really dig into the, the benefits of uh, adding herbs, the health benefits of adding herbs, but also really um, to help everyone start to relax as we get into the uh, weekend as well. And so without further ado, I wanted to introduce Donna Latier, who's going to kick things off. You know what, this is such an unprecedented time for all of us. Gatherings look so different. You know, six months ago, Claudia and I were doing these events uh, at the studio with, you know, 80 people and it had such a different vibe, but I'm inspired by all the creative ways people are sharing with us how they're gathering virtually or now incorporating small gatherings. And I think small gatherings or big gatherings, whether it's virtual or not, and I think that we'll hear a lot from Alicia, it's the small details that matter. You know, those details are what will be remembered. And I think every great gathering starts with a garden, uh, just like every great drink started in the garden. Um, and so today it's gonna be a really fun way to think about how to go into Memorial Day weekend uh, with a different perspective. You know, we've been gathering differently. Uh, we've gotten our taste buds um, used to new things. There was a, a story out just two days ago uh, that Google did this big study on uh, cocktail recipes that were most searched by state. It was intriguing. We actually posted it on our Facebook page. But it's interesting to see how, you know, drinks are inspiring cuisine. And that is inspiring how we entertain and how we gather. So today, I think you're going to hear some really great stories. We've got um, entrepreneurs that are joining us. We've got a, a fun time to share their stories. But as we all gather today, I hope we'll sit back and kind of enjoy the moment. If you're making cocktails along with us, um, have a couple by the time I talk, because I'm a lot funnier if you've had a couple of cocktails. Um, but with... Without further ado, I am thrilled to introduce the founders of KD Trail Vodka. Claudia? Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks, Donna. Um, we are so excited for this. I mean, I was just saying today that I can't believe it's been 10 or 12 weeks. I don't even know what week we're on, but um, it's been a really interesting time, as you say. So um, we're excited to uh, do some mixology today. Um, have some cocktails uh, ready together for uh, Memorial Day weekend and hopefully and um, so Joe uh, is really Claudia yes can you hear us Oh, you can? Okay. Good. All right. Sounds good. Sorry, guys. Um, well, I was just 
uh, introducing Joe, my husband, who is the one that really founded Katie Trail Vodka um, several years ago. We just started selling two years ago. We're a Dallas-based brand, um, and we have three flavors available. We have our original. Um, all of our uh, products are made from corn. Uh, we distill 10 times, uh, slow carbon filter. We also have two flavor vodkas. We have our grapefruit vodka, which is um, made with real fruit juice. And it is also sweetened with organic agave. We have uh, our lemon vodka, which has got real lemon juice, organic agave, and organic lemon peel in it. And they just have a really good fresh flavor that'll be perfect for cocktails in the summer. Can you guys hear us? We can. Oh, perfect. Okay. Good. <laughs> I was just making sure. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, we're, we're available at Total Wine, Goody Goody, and uh, some of the Seagulls and other small fine liquor stores. And um, But right now, of course, everybody's ordering online. So y'all can get all of our products on Grizzly. Or Instant uh, Mart. Instant Cart, yeah. So alcohol is available for delivery, which is so, so tell me, what makes Katie Trail Vodka taste better? Well, I think primarily it's because we use real fruit juice. We don't use any sort of um, like artificial flavors or preservatives or anything like that. So it's, it's, it's more natural. Um, we don't use refined white sugar, um, it's organic agave. And um, yeah, I think that's the main thing. We make it all in small batches, so um, we get it fresh whenever um, it comes to the store. It's good. Yeah. And for somebody like me new, what does a small batch mean? Um, that's a very good question. That's a very subjective term. But for us, we we make them in a hundred gallons at a time. So uh, it's not like two thousand or ten thousand gallons that the, the larger uh, distillers, even even more than that, uh, make for, for a batch. It's the amount, Donna, that Joe and I can make. <laughs> it's, the, it's all about the love that we put in it. That's right. Yeah, we're a family operation. So soup to nuts, we're the ones that do everything. Um, right in your own backyard here in Dallas, so really excited to just kind of have that in um, in the Dallas community. I mean, it's just a it's a neat thing, and we take a lot of pride in it. So it's it's been an adventure for sure. Well, we're excited yeah. that you guys are here. Thank you. It's fun. You know what? Uh, I spoke. Came up with. You what? We're excited to uh, to make some of the cocktails that Alicia came up with. I know it's going to be great. And, you know, we talk a lot about um, that gardens can become something that is a, a, a wellness uh, approach to wellness and not just because you feel well when you put them in a cocktail, but I think the concept of gardening right now, uh, it's certainly a growing trend, just like the trend of home mixology. I mean, people are getting really creative uh, as home mixologists and you can't go wrong. I mean, I think the different taste testing ideas can always be fun, but we like really having plants as a centerpiece for a lot of different gatherings. And the cocktail garden, whether you're infusing mint or making a lavender simple syrup um, or, you know, taking a recipe that Alicia created, I think it's really fun. Uh, and our cocktail garden, I have to say, remains in our top two selling gardens across the country. It's interesting. Um, last year, it was by far the biggest seller in the South. And now, you know, it's doing very well in California um, as our business has exploded. It's really fun to have people experiment with different cocktails and different herbs. Um, and certainly, whether you're making it uh, a mixology uh, with al alcohol, you know, if you're doing just a mocktail or a cocktail, it's kind of fun. And the way we have really grown is by making gardening easy and accessible to everyone. It's not a, oh, I'm going to garden this weekend and then not do it. It's a participatory activity that's really good for the whole family. And it doesn't have to take up your entire weekend. It's really about the enjoyment of getting to know the plants. And we have a team, we have a plant nutritionist, we've got uh, somebody who works on our team who has a PhD in soil. We've really worked with horticulturalists and technicians 
to make the whole experience easy and accessible. So it's, you know, whenever we launch a new garden, we tie into trends that are going on in lifestyle, in life, right? So last year we launched, or early, I guess, uh, at the end of yet last year, we launched our taco toppings garden. And I know now a lot of margaritas are made with vodka. Uh, this season, actually for Father's Day, we're launching a new garden that's uh, brand new and it's a pepper garden. Some like it hot, which is really fun. And one of the things that Beth has taught us is we make jalapeno uh, infused simple syrup and that mixes great with vodka. I think we did that last season uh, with you guys and it was just awesome. Um, it, it was tremendous. And so I think that one of the things that I like to share during this unique time of gatherings is it's so important to connect. And whether you're connecting over Zoom or you're connecting in person, a great way to do it is to gather and do some fun things together. So we have a mom and daughter who are actually kind of having this little competition of growing a garden. And then they're coming up with creative cocktails and culinary creations and kind of competing. She's in, the daughter's in Austin and the mother is in Houston, which I think is really fun. Um, and I think that it's like you guys have put together uh, this, the vodka that is exceptional and you've looked at every detail and that's kind of what we've done with the gardens. Um, and I think it's just a great way to gather and, you know, we've thought of all the details just like you did. I love your story about how you came up with the name. Would you share that? Oh, for Katie Trail? Yeah. Yes. So um, actually, uh, are we still on mute? No. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, actually, um, so I've been a passionate about the food business and my family been in the beverage business for over 100 years. And... Um, I was traveling a lot for work and wanted to change careers and do something closer to home right after I got married to my lovely wife. And um, I was talking with a friend while we were walking down the Katy Trail and he suggested that I um, look into a distillery. And I said, well, that's, a, that's an interesting idea. And so, uh, yeah, I, it wasn't but a few weeks later, I was on a plane uh, to a distillery going to learn how to do it and then off to um, go buy equipment. And, um, and then uh, whenever we came up with the, the name for the vodka, I thought, let's go back to, let's go back to where it started on the Katy Trail. So. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Well, I, you know, when we gather now, some of the things, I mean, we're going to talk a lot about how the herbs that you harvest can become part of the basic uh, recipe. They can be a, a garnish to the recipe, but I think an herb garden also plays in the decor and the feel of an event. Here I've actually harvested from this garden uh, just a bouquet of mint, and here I've got a bouquet of parsley. These will last a lot longer than uh, flowers, and it adds a nice aroma. And I always think it's fun when you gather to bring the cocktail garden inside. If you've got you know, even one or two people and they get to kind of garnish and make up their own drink. It makes it interactive and engaging, but nobody better to share ideas of entertaining and gathering, uh, gathering with depth, with your family, virtually or in person um, with groups, small or big than Alicia. So Alicia, I'm going to eagerly turn it over to you and let you share uh, the creations that you've done for us. Donna, thank you so much for having me. Um, I started Alicia with Lifestyle, and actually under another name, um, about almost six years ago. And my goal has always been to encourage people to create memories at home for their friends and family. So this really has been um, a really sweet time for our family to be able to do that. We've had all kinds of celebrations, just our little family of five. We've had two birthdays. And um, actually, my husband and I celebrated our 25th anniversary. So uh, it's been um, a really neat time for us to be at home and spending a lot of time outside. We've actually had a raised garden for about four years. And so uh, my girls love to pick out the plants and do them. We've loved your additions to our garden. And it's really a fun thing for our family to do, um, to run out at night and say, oh, 
you're making, you know, a salad, let me go grab the basil. And so um, it really is part of what we do. So thank you for what you're doing and making it so easy for people um, to, to learn how to grow a garden and um, realize how enjoyable that is. So um, I'm really excited to have learned about Katie Trail 5 Hep. My husband actually was one of the original founders of the uh, CrossFit Katie Trail. So we have a Katie Trail connection as well. Um, so it was really fun to learn about you and to work with your vodkas and um, they're really great. So um, I took inspiration from your cocktail garden for three different um, cocktails that I want to share with you and whether you've printed them out um, and you're going to make them later or you're making them along with me, I'm just glad to have them in your hands. So please let us know as we go along if you have any questions because um, I'm happy to answer them and Doug will read them and, and let me know what your questions are. So um, I think I'm going to start with the um, grapefruit basil fizz. And this is a recipe um, based off of a cocktail that my husband and I had in the Maldives. And they had so many fresh herbs and vegetables um, at this resort. It was really amazing the different combinations they came up with. So um, what I want to do first is start with some basil and some red grapes. And this is from my cocktail garden. I've already kind of prepped them a little bit. One of my favorite things when we have people over is to kind of set up a self-serve cocktail bar. Um, it, it's another activity, a little bit of built-in entertainment, and it's really fun for people to learn how to make the drinks that you're serving. So uh, I put five or six basil leaves in my tall glass, and then I'm gonna put six or so grapes. That's six. Um, and there are two different kinds of muddlers, and both two drinks actually use muddlers um, tonight. There's a wooden one like this that has kind of grooves on the end, and I think I just got these at Target. And then this is a flat paddle muddler that comes with like the cocktail sets that you see. So that's what this is. Um, I'm going to use this large wooden one for this to break up the grapes. It's a little bit of pressure to do that, but if you break them up and kind of work them in with the basil. Okay, I got all of them done there. Then I will add a little bit of the Katie Trail grapefruit vodka. I love fruit infused vodkas because they just add a little bit more flavor and um, this one is really great in this recipe. So calls for an ounce and a half. And as you're making drinks, obviously you can adjust to your taste. I am um, a smaller person. So typically I'll do about an ounce um, of vodka in a drink. Um, switch that around just a little bit to mix it in and then go ahead and fill it with ice. Add your fresh grapefruit juice and if you're in Dallas uh, my favorite place to get it where it saves you a little bit of work is Central Market they have all these fresh juice fresh juices already squeezed which really makes this kind of thing a lot easier so then give it a little stir and this is a little bit of a boozy cocktail you top it off with Prosecco, and this is just a little bottle that I've opened. Top it off with that. Give it another little stir. And then garnish it with a little bit more basil. So here's the first one. So this is really refreshing and really light. And the grapes add just a little bit of sweet to the tart of the grapefruit. So, and the basil just adds a whole nother dimension to it. So it's really great. So. And Alicia, I think it would be good. So for some people set up, they can't see uh, what's coming through from the phone. So is there a way to tilt your laptop um, so that the camera kind of gives you a side shot as well? You bet. Actually, wondering if... Mm 
Mm -hmm. That doesn't quite work. That shows. That, that's much better. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'll Alicia, I have a question. Will this work also as a mocktail? Absolutely. Um, all of these recipes, you can um, substitute in Topo Chico or some kind of club soda. If you'd like, there are different flavored club sodas that you could add, which would be really great um, as well. So you can certainly make all of these as a mocktail, if that is what you'd like to do. And you still get all the great flavors um, of the herbs and a little bit of fruit as well. Okay. I'm gonna adjust this just a little bit. While she's adjusting, one of the things that I think is an interesting trend is people are now not feeling like they have to switch from a cocktail um, when dinner comes to wine. They're actually enjoying cocktails all the way through dinner. And chefs are now pairing uh, cocktails to their main courses, which I think is an interesting trend. It used to be that the sommeliers played a huge part. And now the mixologists at some of the, you know, well-known restaurants are actually a big part of the menu decision-making process, which I think is an interesting trend. And Alicia, I think just just for just for those that didn't have that wasn't able to see that cocktail, can you just do a real quick summary of kind of how you build that? Absolutely, absolutely. Sorry about that. Um, I put the basil in the glass. In fact, I can just do another one for you. If you, and this is just a bit smaller glass, but if you'll put the basil in the bottom of the glass and muddle it with your grapes, and this is the wooden meddler that is um, kind of patterned on the end, and just give it a good working over. So you've broken up the grapes, and you have kind of bruised a little bit the, the basil, and then if you'll add your ice, and then your vodka and then grapefruit juice. And then you top with uh, Prosecco. And again, you can use a um, flavored sparkling water for these as well. And then just give it a good stir and garnish it with a little bit more basil. Perfect. Okay, are we ready for the next one? We're ready. Okay. All right, the next one is a Southside Fizz. I'm gonna grab my recipe so I don't leave anything out here. This is a really classic summer drink and um, is really refreshing. So what I do for this one is I do, I use my cocktail shaker for this because we want to, um, strain out the mint. So if you'll take five or six mint leaves and a little squeeze of agave into your cocktail shaker. And I'm gonna use my flat paddle muddler for this one to really get into the mint. You could also do a simple syrup. Donna talked about that earlier. And uh, you can certainly do that. Doing it this way saves you some prep time and also makes it a little bit more interactive. So once I've muddled the mint and I will add a little bit of fresh orange juice. And then again, a little shortcut from the juice bar at Central Market, some just fresh squeezed lime juice, a couple ounces of that. And then give it a good, a good shake. And I don't have ice in here because I'm not worried about making it cold. I just want to mix it well. Then I'll put, well, this was a fun glass. You can serve any of these drinks really in any glass that you like. 
Um, the tall glasses are really good when you're topping something off with Prosecco so that you know that you've left yourself some room. Eyes to your glass. And then strain your drink over the top. And you can garnish it with a little bit more mint. And something that I think is really fun when you are entertaining friends or family or just wanting to make it a special night at home is to add a really fun drink stir. And these are, I'm gonna put these close to the camera and I'll show them to you later. Um, there's a Dallas company called Acrylic Sticks and they make all of these really cute um, stir sticks for drinks. And so just give that a little garnish and cheers. You can also make this a Southside Fizz by adding um, a little bit of Topo Chico to that as well. So um, this is a really versatile recipe. Really a lot of these you can do that with. I know um, that's kind of become a trend is to add Topo Chico or sparkling water to your cocktail. So um, this is one that lends itself really well to that. Start here. Are we doing well on questions? Does anyone have any questions? Yes, yes, we have a couple of questions. Let me jump in while we have a little break between drinks. Um, so first one is uh, lavender is quite floral. What are ideal liquors or mixes for balancing the flavor of, of uh, herbs like lavender? Okay, well, one of the recipes we have does have lavender in it. And so I have um, used the lemon vodka. This is actually the drink we're making next and the lemon to kind of give it some citrus so that it's not as powerful and cuts it a little bit. Um, I do think that it pairs well with elderflower, which is another kind of floral liqueur. Um, I guess, does that help? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> with that, having the citrus in it cuts it a little bit. So another question, and then we'll get on to the third cocktail. We've got a couple more after this as well. Uh, this one, as an old soul and fan of classic cocktails, especially the simplicity of a Tom Collins, what are your recommendations for using herbs and other ingredients to refresh old classics? You know, I think that everyone's palate is different. And so if you have a favorite cocktail and a, a, a favorite herb, I I would pair them together and see what you think. I mean, I think a lot of that is uh, personal opinion. I love basil. And so I've made um, vodka mojitos with blueberry and basil. And so I think pairing flavors that you enjoy yourself is a great way to create a new cocktail or to refresh one um, that you already love. Interestingly enough, that Google search, the number one cocktail that has been searched across the country is the old fashioned and people love putting rosemary in old fashions or lemon thyme in an old fashioned which i think is very interesting uh, i think you're right herbs if if you have a favorite flavor i think you can add mint to a tom collins um, and some of the herbs that have a really strong stem can play up the idea of your own stirrer uh, and herbs, whatever the, the, you don't have to muddle them. You can actually take a leaf of the basil or mint and rub the rim of a glass. And it adds nice scents to as you're drinking um, and a little bit of flavor. And you can also make herb simple sugars um, and herb salts. Uh, you said you liked basil. One of my favorite things to share is when you harvest fresh basil right off uh, the stem, go ahead and put it in a food processor with some rock salt and pulse it a couple times. And you don't have to dry it or anything. Then you put it in the oven at about 200 degrees for 30 minutes, stir it once, and it becomes the best basil salt, which actually is a beautiful uh, rim on a vodka Bloody Mary glass. Just saying. That sounds fantastic, Donna. We're going to have to try that. <laughs> yes. 
That sounds amazing. And we love to use flavored salts on popcorn. And so, oh, so do we. My, my love of basil, I think that might be the next uh, flavor that I have for my popcorn. It's, it's so different when you use a fresh herb that's not dried. It's pungent. It's incredible. Even just sitting here next or standing next to this garden, I mean, you can just smell all the fresh aromas. It's just, it's wonderful. And these cocktails have been fantastic, Alicia. I really, really yeah. enjoy them. We're sharing them with my in-laws who are sitting inside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. My, we are actually getting to see my parents for the first time since February, just a little bit. So I'm, I'm excited to have this all set up uh, for them when they come in so they can kind of uh, feel welcome and, you know, make uh, a cocktail after a really long day of driving. Definitely, yeah. Where are they coming in from? Um, they uh, live in Kansas City now. I grew up in Austin, but they've been in Kansas City for about 27 years. So go Chiefs. We're big Chiefs fans. <laughs> because of that, I adopted him now. So we're excited for them to be here in a little while. Definitely. Great. So do you want me to go ahead and make the next one? Yeah. Very good. All right. The next one is um, with lavender, as we just had the question. So um, this I'm going to... Let's see, I'm going to put the lavender in the bottom of my glass, just a few little sprigs there. And again, a little bit of agave nectar. And then I'm gonna muddle these in the bottom of my glass. And this is another one that you could do a lavender simple syrup if you wanted, which is really a great idea if you wanted to make a picture of these. And this lavender lemonade could also be a mocktail or just a regular lemonade. So I'm kind of braising that at the bottom to release the flavors. And I'm using the flat paddle muddler for that. And then I'm going to juice two lemons. And this is just a hand juicer, which is really easy when you're just doing a little bit at a time. So I will juice that right over. I've already removed the seeds when I cut them. You're doing two whole lemons or two halves? Two lemons. I like tart. You know, when you um, are being your own mixologist, you can make those changes. So if you're not a super tart lemon um, person, then you could use one or you can add a little bit more if, um, if that's not quite enough lemon for you. Yeah, I'm some extra lime in the last one because I like tart as well, but so like it a little bit sweeter. So we added a, a little bit more. Oh, good. And that is what I think is really fun about making your own cocktails at home and having it set up where people can make their, you know, their own choice of drink so they can kind of change it as they like. I always because I do like tart, will order a, maybe a margarita or something at a restaurant, let them bring it to me and taste it. And then I almost always without fail, ask for a little shot of fresh lime juice so that I can add it to there um, and make it just a little bit more tart, maybe another slice of jalapeno as well. So I'm really excited about the Sun Like It Hot Garden. I love spicy. So I think that is really fun. In fact, one of the cocktail gardens that I have has peppers in it. So I was very tempted to use that, but I thought all of these fresh herbs were very um, beginning of summer to me. So I've got my lemon, which I just dropped on the table. Just one <laughs> Live, hold on. <laughs> yeah, Donna, I'm so excited about the chili garden too. I mean, I have, my mom's from Mexico, so I love spicy things, and luckily I married somebody as well, otherwise, Kitchen time might have been a little bit um, bipolar. Yes. <laughs> uh, so well, about that, we're gonna have to come pick up a garden. Well, and it's, they grow so well. And because our gardens are mobile and that gives them an extended season, we've actually just harvested about 20 jalapenos from our pepper garden last year because we moved it in and out with the weather alerts. Right. And it's just fun. I mean, we had a customer 
sent us a picture and they probably last year got 200 shishito peppers from their pepper garden. So I, I just think these monogram bags, some like it hot. I think it's a great way to celebrate Father's Day, um, but it's just a fun garden. So what other chilies are in that garden? You said shishito. It depends on what matches. That's a great question because we've got the patented matching algorithm. It really depends on what time of year you're planting it, where you're growing it, and what farm is going to be supplying the plants. Uh, and that's based on timing and location. So we've got, oh my gosh, right now in our library of plant shipping, uh, probably about 13 or 14 different pepper varieties. Uh, and it's so fun to play with the different flavors. And, and I think that they're fun to harvest and they're fun to see grow. We had a question the other day if um, they had a tomato and a pepper in their taco garden. And they asked if the bees that were circulating around were gonna pollinate the tomatoes to make them really spicy like the jalapeno, which I thought was such a great question because so many of us are new to gardening. And I think it's really fun to experience uh, all, the, all the things that come out when you're growing something. Yeah, I've never seen um, or even heard of any other gardening resource that has that matching algorithm that you guys have. It's such a unique uh, tool, and it really is just amazing. I'm so grateful that you guys have come up with that. Well, we're excited. It's really a part of, um, it, it's certainly a foundation of us, and Julie and I had a good time working on it. So, Alicia, we're excited about the next cocktail. Okay. I am back caught up to where you are. So um, muddled the lavender and juiced my lemons, added the agave. And then now I've put ice in my glass and I'm going to add the uh, lemon, KD12 vodka. Again, I love when they are fruit infused. I just think it helps with the flavor as well. So put a little ounce in there and give it a stir. And then garnish this one also with a little bit of fresh lavender. So I tasted them as I made them the first time, but I haven't tonight, but I think this is what uh, I may enjoy tonight. So I have a question. With fruit-infused vodkas, does it shorten the shelf life of the vodka once it's open? I'm sorry, what? With fruit-infused vodkas, does it shorten the, the shelf life once it's open? Yeah, so uh, any flavored vodka is going to have a, a, sh a shelf life. Um, I tried, I mean, we try to make sure that ours is cycling out between six to eight months. Uh, my parents like to keep theirs in the freezer, but it's not going to go. It's not going to go bad, but it'll it'll stay fresher in the freezer, um, and last much much longer. But uh, yeah, sunlight and heat and things like that are horrible for uh, any yeah. flavored alcohol or even bourbons and rums. It it will affect the organoleptic uh, compounds that are in those uh, products as well. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, everybody, I, I want to leave it with this thought. Alicia and Claudia, will you guys both share one or two tips on a unique way for us to all celebrate Memorial Day weekend this weekend since it's a little different? One kind of fun tip. Well, we, we got married on Memorial Day weekend. That's so, right. I mean, <laughs> We'll be celebrating our anniversary. Um, um, let's see. What could you? Um, obviously, you make cocktails and garden. Um, there you go. That's a fun. I mean, being outside is. I we spend so much time cooped up inside, especially now that we're having to work from our own homes. It's like you're turning work into your your house into your work, and and you know I think it's great to get outside. So. Um, go for a walk, uh, have a drink outside on the patio with your um, cocktail garden, or as you garden. There you go. Yeah, agreed. Alicia? One of the things that we've been doing just in general that we will also be doing this weekend is trying to just make every moment special. 
whether that is, I mean, we've had virtual soccer banquets, we've had birthday parties, or it's just been a beautiful day, like you said, to be outside. And so I have been setting um, a pretty table for our family so that every gathering seems special because this is not a time that's going to last always, but um, I'm wanting that to happen. So I am you know, pulling out my nice things. I have, um, like tonight, I've pulled out my you know, pretty cocktail napkins from the Dallas company called Dogwood Hill. And so, you know, just trying to do the little things that um, seem to make an occasion special. So this weekend we'll be doing that. We're so, my girls are so excited to see their grandparents. We've all been quarantined so that we can finally get together. So um, I think just doing what you can, what makes you um, happy and um, what makes an, a, a moment feel special to you. And for me, that is setting a table and having a good meal for my family. I love that. You know what I think for, me, it really is certainly about um, reflecting on those who have given their lives for us, but also reflecting on the time we have right now. But I have, I have one last thought. I have to do a big shout out for Sonic Ice. How do you feel about Sonic Ice in cocktails, the crushed ice? I actually don't use the Sonic Ice. Um, I have the little square ice. That is okay. my preference. Um, I know a lot of people like that. Um, I feel like it melts a little bit faster. And so, um, but I know that, again, that's kind of a personal preference. I know a lot of people love that crushed sonic ice, um, but mine is kind of, a, it's a flat, small square. So I feel like it holds up a little bit better, especially um, against alcohol, if you're making a cocktail, but um, that's, that's mine, but um, I know the other Well, what, whatever cocktail people make this weekend or mocktail, uh, we always like to say that if you add fresh herbs that you've grown, it negates any calories in the beverage that you're serving, which is always a good feeling. <laughs> That's a great thing for me because I have like two cocktail gardens already prepared for people. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Doug, any other questions? We, just a couple. We have just a couple. Let me pull these up. Okay. This, for the Katie Trail folks, uh, one of our, one of our uh, listeners is in Atlanta. Is there a way they can get hold of Katie Trail Vodka? Yes, um, I think it's like 18 hour drive. Unfortunately, <laughs> we're, not, we're, not, we're not in that market yet. I, I do apologize. We're just in, uh, in Texas at the moment um, and it's not legal for us. So, so come, come to Dallas. We're, we're expanding. Yes, right. come visit us in Dallas. We have a great, great place here. So uh, any advice, Alicia, on what not to mix together? Gosh, that might even be a better question for Donna. I, um, I like an herb and citrus. And um, I think maybe, I don't know that I would mix two herbs together. Um, I think one will end up being more powerful than the other. Um, but that might be a better Donna question than for me. You know what? The two that I do like to mix together, we had a, um, most of our products and, and concepts really have been with, from feedback from our customers. And somebody uh, requested a basil garden. So it has five different kinds of basil in it. And when you muddle different kinds of basils together, it really is tremendous. It, they each give off a different hint, whether it's cinnamon basil or Genovese basil or sweet basil. And the flowers on herbs, when, when herbs start to flower, if you're cutting them off because you want your herb to continue to grow, don't just dispose of those flowers that you've pinched off. They actually make uh, great additions to cocktails or mocktails. And the same holds true for mint. I have uh, brought different mints together, whether it's pineapple mint, spearmint, peppermint, and I think that uh, those always work really beautifully together. And Donna, we, we've got two more questions, one for everyone, but this one's just for you. So can you just talk a little bit about how you source the plants, how you connect with local farmers um, for the plants that you grow in Gardenuti? Absolutely. So we match people to plants based on the time they're uh, looking to garden and uh, 
have a deep love for what they're doing and what they're growing. It comes through uh, with every plant that they ship out for us. And I think that we source them through relationships. We meet different people and everyone we work with or are about to start working with that we've gotten to know really well, we have such great admiration for, and they do it for the love of, of what they're doing. And what they like about working with us is we create the perfect environment for the plants to thrive. So there's, you know, we've got a 95% success rate with those who are gardening for the first time with us. And so they love seeing their, their plants that they've raised since babies go to a forever home. And as this gardening movement is so popular right now, it's wonderful to think that people are, you know, with us ordering second and third gardens. So it's not just a one-time movement. It's going to be more of a, uh, a lifestyle, which I think is really important. And, you know, if we can inspire even one child who gets in the garden to want to go into farming, then we all benefit in the future. So this is the last question for everyone. Um, so we know margaritas are so popular. What is your way to spice one up? So what herbs or vegetables, or how do you like to shape, make, change up a margarita? Um, and while you're thinking about that, we had a couple of people asking about the Some Like It Hot Garden um, and when it's going to be available. That's going to be up on the website over the weekend, so you'll be able to purchase that through next week. So for those who want to get Some Like It Hot Garden, you can, you can purchase that next week. And so let's hear. It is, and let me jump in on that. Mm -hmm. It's a limited edition. So if they want to go ahead and order it now, when, all they have to do is in notes when they check out is just put uh, some like at Hot Garden and our Grow Pro team will make sure to match you up. So you kind of will get it before it's um, really? nationally yeah, available, yeah. I guess. Perfect. Awesome. So Donna, how do you like to spice up a margarita? With herb salts and with jalapenos, with any kind of pepper. Um, I love, I'm a salty over a sweet girl. And so... I love making all these herb infused salts. And I think when you take something that salty mixed with something kind of savory or a really interesting drink, I think that's really fun. Alicia? We are one and the same. Uh, the spicier, the better when it comes to a margarita. I like serranos. And so um, I'll even cut up a whole serrano and muddle it in the bottom. Again, sometimes at a restaurant, I'll order a margarita and then ask for a fresh serrano and add it myself because sometimes they'll put a pickled jalapeno or something strange in there. So I, um, I've been known to do that myself and to ask for extra, but I love the idea of the uh, jalapeno salt on the outside. So good. Claudia? So well, I'll answer for Claudia. We love, like she's already said, we love spicy, spicy, uh, we we'll drink a, a spicy margarita all day long but we also make a, a what's called a spicy katie with our grapefruit vodka uh, it's we use jalapenos in it muddled with uh, lemon juice and grapefruit vodka and then uh, topo chico as well and it's really nice and then we use tahine yeah, tahin. which is a mexican salty tart um, and we use that as our rim and it just is divine I mean, I could drink a whole pitcher. <laughs> but we should, we could try, we should try the, uh, the salts and the, uh, right, with the herbs. With the herb, with the, uh, jalapeno too. That could be an interesting taste. Yeah, absolutely. We also like anything smoky in margaritas is good too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. So many different varieties these days. I love seeing all the new, um, the new, uh, recipes that are, you know, refreshing old classics. It's really, it's, like you said, mixology is such a trendy movement right now, just like gardening. And fun. Yes. Well, I'm going to wrap it up and just say thanks, everybody, for being here. I mean, I think it's a, a new way to gather, a new way to learn about fresh ideas, uh, and a new way to meet fun friends. And I encourage everybody on the call to take a moment this weekend and relax um, and think about all that we all have to be grateful for. So thank you guys very much for joining us. Thank you, Donna and Alicia. This has been so fun. Okay. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>